So here it is, the ICM2. It's exactly the same as the ICM3 with regards to how it is constructed. So we're going to flip it upside down and we are going to push in the tabs along it which are holding the faceplate to the back plate. There we go. So now we've got the face plate removed from the back plate. And if you have a look inside, you can see that you have um, two ribbon cables, um, very, very similar to the ICM3. So we're just gonna undo the tabs and pull off the ribbons. So this is the face and this is the back of the screen and there are two screws that are holding it in place. And that's the screen. So the next thing you want to do is place double-sided sticky tape around the edges of where the screen is and make sure that you get it on the very edge of the hole here but don't let any protrude over into um, the actual gap here because you don't want to see any sticky tape once you've placed the screen in, in situ. So grab your screen, uh, this is the 3.5 inch uh, OSU screen and notice where the black border is on this screen. You want the black border to be hidden when you uh, fit it into the ICM2. So make sure that the edges line up. And when you're done it should look something like this and you should be able to see minimal black border uh, around the screen and uh, the other side looks like this, looks like it's meant to be there. So we're done with this part now. And now we're gonna to go to the rest of the ICM box. So, so with this unit, undo the three screws. And once you've done that, push the plastic down the length of the metal box. Now what you want to do is uh, remove the uh, top of this ICM2 box and you do that by pushing in the tabs on each side. Just by bending them in and then just bending out slightly the tabs on the back. And then you should find that it just lifts off. So you've got two ribbon cables that go to the front. Uh, you have a large one and a smaller one. And the smaller one was to power the green screen and to supply image to the green screen. So we don't need that anymore. So remove the smaller ribbon cable and you do that by lifting up the tabs on either side of it very carefully. Don't do, put too much pressure or you'll break it. And then just pop out the, uh, the ribbon. And uh, this smaller one, we don't need anymore. So. I'm just gonna put that to one side. Um, now, whilst you have this open, pop it upside down and do the same again, um, pushing the tabs around the sides. And pry out the sides and lift off that section as well. Because the, the difference between the ICM2 and the ICM3 is that the ICM2 has all this lovely space on the inside and 
What that means is instead of having all of the items inside the dashboard, like the uh, Raspberry Pi, etc., we can actually place them inside the ICM2, which means we don't need to mess about trying to find space inside the dashboard for our items. What you want to do first of all is grab your Raspberry Pi, like so. I'll just uh, take off the uh, plastic for a second because we're going to be popping in the ribbon cable uh, for the screen, for the new screen. So very similar to the uh, ICM2 on the, on the Raspberry Pi itself, you have a little tab that you pull up and you can drop in your ribbon cable like so, and then you push it down and clamp it in place like this. And then just put the case back together again, just thread that through. There we go. So the way that I do this is you have the Raspberry Pi upside down with the ribbon cable coming out of it. And you place it as far to the right as possible whilst you have the ICM upside down like this. So we're going to thread the ribbon cable down the side of the PCB, down the gap, side of the gap like this. We're going to do it, push it all the way through so that the Raspberry Pi sits inside the ICM2 box, but you have the ribbon cable protruding from the other side. Okay, so that's that's what we want to want to do. And if you have a look on this side, we still have access to all of the USB ports. Um, and then on this side, we have access to the power. So that's, uh, that's basically how we want to, uh, to put it in. So then we th you need to think about power. So you grab your um, USB power, 12 volt, five volt adapter, and thread through the, the black and red cables through the hole in the back that you have punched out. Leaving the uh, white connector inside the ICM2. Just leave that in there for the time being. Then you grab your short USB cable and then plug one side of it into the Raspberry Pi and the other side of it goes into the USB. Like so. Then you need your Bluetooth adapter to plug into one of the USBs. The USB cable, uh, which you will go, which will go to your phone. Um, so you push that through the hole in the uh, in the back again. And plug it into one of the USBs. And then finally, um, the sound card needs to be plugged into one of the USBs. But of course, we need to plug in the auxiliary wire and the microphone. So the way that I like to do this is um, with a couple of short extension leads. So these are just standard 3.5 millimeter extensions and I've got a black and a white because we're going to distinguish with the white being the microphone and the black being the uh, sound. So I'm going to thread these two through the hole in the, uh, in the ICM3. Like so. And the black is going to go in the green and the white is going to go in the pink microphone hole. And then we're just going to pop this in 
like that. And when you're done, it's going to look something like this. And um, that's exactly as we need it to be. So pop the metal back on. like so, and then flip it over. And you now have your, your ribbon cable here. So you thread the ribbon cable through the gap that was created by the um, other ribbon cable that you removed. So just pop that through there like so. And it's starting to look a little bit like a nice professional install. And then grab the uh, top Pop that back on. And there we go. So we have a metal box, which is completely closed again, with two ribbon cables coming out of the front. And you'll have your power connection, two audio wires coming out for the auxiliary wire and the microphone and a USB cable which will be going to the phone that you're going to be connecting to it. So with that, thread all of these wires back through the plastic. So thread all of your wires through this. Like so, and then push the metal through the plastic again and screw it back up. And once you've done that, grab the front of the ICM2 and connect the two wires, the two ribbon cables. So start with the one that was meant to be there to begin with by lifting up the, the uh, tab and pushing in the ribbon cable. And then the second ribbon cable, which we've installed from the Raspberry Pi, goes into the screen and you have it with the blue side facing you. Just clamp it in place. And it should then end up looking something like this. And then you can simply Click it back together and then you have a nice ICM2 which has been modified and it's ready to go. So when you connect into your car, the black and red wires go to the back of the cigarette lighter. The black cable goes to your ground loop isolator and then to the auxiliary input on your EHU inside your Saab 9.3. And then the white wire gets connected to the microphone um, for your hands-free calling and voice control. And then finally, the USB cable, um, I would run down to below your cigarette lighter so that you can plug your phone in down there. And, uh, and then it's, uh, it's, it's as simple as that really. And it's nice and neat, no, nothing else hanging outside the dashboard.